Okay, I think we're ready. Puki Jushi Eto Tom Rira Limshi Ninde Yemari Sange Shingdu Ninde Owargi Dokun Namdak Shingla Jupar Show Idam Guru Rana Mandala Kamiriatayami Chudam Zoki Jodam La Changchu Bardu Dakni Jamsuchi Daki Chinyan Gibe Sanamgi Drola Benchir Sange Jubar Show Sange Chudam Zoki Jodam La Changchu Bardu Dakni Jamsuchi Daki chunyen gi be sunam gi Drola penchir sangye drupar sho Shiddam soki chonam la Changchu bardu dagni kyasu chi Daki chunyen gi be sunam gi Drola penchir sangye drupar sho Ooh, ooh. Uh, I think we're here. Yep. Are we? Okay. So we've been talking about uh, ways to take your novice vows, okay, and the components of that ceremony. And we got some more things going on here. I haven't checked past here, which means I haven't ever read it before. Uh, so I. You know, I might have to look some things up or something like that. Uh, uh, I'm going to just cut it. Uh, okay. Tsukpu is a shikanda. Shikanda. It means this hair. <laughs> this top knot, yeah. So tsukpu means top knot. It means, by tradition, as you know, uh, we don't spend the whole ceremony cutting off all the all the hair. <laughs> we ask them to shave their head and leave a, f a little tuft here. It just saves time in the ceremony and messiness. Okay. Uh. So uh, tsukpu means that little tuft, which is left. Uh, then uh, true chepa. Uh, means to wash, okay? Uh, so this literally says, uh, trek means shave off or cut off, ancient word, okay? Cut off the tsukpu, cut off the tuft, and wash. Uh, nowadays, you wet it first and then you cut it off. Mm -hmm. But I guess in the old days it was the opposite, maybe. Maybe you wash off, maybe you're just getting rid of all the hair around. Okay, it's nice to save that lock of hair. Mm. It's like your baby's first haircut or something. Did, Did you, you do that? Did yeah. you have it yet? You didn't do it yet. Did you save yours? No. Oh. <laughs> Probably there wasn't anything there. I, uh, I don't remember, no. I have a photo of the moment uh, oh. with all the big shots at Saramay. Uh, Would you share it with us? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think I can. Wow. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I remember the five monks who were there. Uh, mm -hmm. Some some heavy hitters, Gyeong Cancer Rinpoche, Kim Cancer Rinpoche, mm -hmm. and the Tinley Dobgyal, mm -hmm. the current uh, Gyeong ex abbot, <laughs> and <Ken laughs> and, <laughs> and some <laughs> other people. <laughs> uh, current, uh, current no, to be the current Gyeong ex abbot is to be in line for Tsongkhapa's throne. So oh, it's wow. a big deal. It's a big deal. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, if things go right, you you could end up on the throne. Okay, so Tsukpu Jeng Tsu Chepadang. Kembu Shabla Tuk De. Tuk means you touch the, or you touch your head at. Tuk means, it's related to Tuk in the sense of to meet somebody. Oh. Uh, tuk Song in colloquial Tibetan means I met him. What's the honorific? Jiao. Mm, Jiao. Mm, Jiao. Okay. The tuk, tuk means the, you know, 
touch the abbot, touch the vow giver's feet, and uh, put your head at the vow giver's feet, and therefore, chaktel. Chaktel the jukpa means you should make them bow down. Okay, jukpa means you should get them to bow down. Get them to. Jukpa here means get them to. Tell them to. Uh, they have to bow down. They have to do a prostration. Uh, then uh, this verb tepa is a is a difficult verb in Tibetan. It means generally it means to direct your mind towards something. It comes in like the three principal paths or something. So in the study of meditation or emptiness, it means direct your mind a certain way. But here it means uh, turn over these uh, robes and uh, turn over, uh, what do you mean? Yeah, turn over to them all the necessary articles that they need to be a monk or a nun. You know, what do you call that? Turn over to them. Or Hand over? Yeah, it's like that. Hand over, deliver, uh, bestow. Uh, okay, something like that. Okay, bestow on them, and then there's a list of stuff that you should bestow on them. Laga, upper upper robes. Tanga, the skirt. Yeah, laga is the upper the upper part upper parts of the robe. Oh, uh, right. Tanga means the sham top, which means the skirt. Uh, Dingwa means their monastic cloth seat. So every monk and nun is supposed to have a piece of cloth. You see me use it when I do the closing of the yeah. retreat boundaries and stuff. So big ceremonies, you're supposed to sit on that. In the, you know, so that's called a, ding, a dingwa, and it has a certain pattern of sewing, and uh, it has to be made a certain way. And uh, it used to be a cushion, and now it's just a piece of cloth that you put on top of the cushions. And I remember the Rinpoche and me fundraised for the current, well, at, those, at that time, the cushions of Sarah May. It's a lot. And you do rows, you know. So nowadays it's just a row, a cushion row. But in the old days, it was probably your meditation cushion. You see? It was called Dingwa. Okay. Ding means to lay down something like a stepping stone. We had stepping stone the other day downstairs. It means to, to lay down something like that, Dingwa. Uh, Hengse is, uh, Rinpoche really objected to it being called a begging bowl. <laughs> he called it a sage's bowl. Okay, but Hengse means uh, the bowl which a monk asks for food. In a Tibetan monastery, it's enough to hold uh, a good meal at Samba or about six momos. In a Sri Lankan monastery, uh, where they really do go ask for their food, it's about this big. And I, I went with them once just for the experience. I was dealing uh, stones in, in Sri Lanka. I was buying stones in Sri Lanka f from a very good friend of mine. And he said, well, since you're a monk, we should take you out with the monks one day. And I went. It was unbelievable. Uh, they eat, those guys. It's like, it's like this. And the sponsor has to give it all to you at the same time. So I was like, you know, put this thing there, and then put this thing on top, and then put this thing on top, and then put this thing on top, and, put this thing on top, and then they put an ice cream bar on the top. <laughs> and, and we were all like, you know. And so anyway, that's what I'm going to say. And there's a required shape, there's required s material for it. It's, it's all these rules. Okay, very tal Talmudic. Yeah. Uh, Chutzak means a strainer. Uh, a strain like a strain meaning vegetables or something. This thing. Corny. Oh, because uh, in the old days you're supposed to. Strain the water. You're not allowed to drink water from a stream okay. unless you strain it first and take out the tiny bugs. Okay. Uh, and sock means to strain. Chewed sock means a water strainer. Okay. Dang chepe. Yoje means all the stuff you need. Okay, yoje means things you need, required things. Yoje means all the articles, all the required articles for a monk and nun. You gotta have robes, you gotta have a bowl, and you're supposed to walk around with a strainer. Okay. 
ceremony? Well, no, for the rest of your life. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it always Rinpoche would go get a kitchen strainer with a you know like a fluorescent green handle and <laughs> and it just didn't look like in, in, it looked out of place. But he said we got to have one. <laughs> we got to have one for the ceremony. You know. <laughs> I'm like okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> in Tibet, do you think that the monks went out and did this, or was it already long? Uh, as you know, this is in the history of Jetsonkapa, in the biography of Jetsonkapa, there's a part where uh, he was berated mm -hmm. by Manjushri for being lax <laughs> on the Vinaya. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, tighten up. Mm -hmm. So then he tightened up in Tibet. He tightened up hard. So I believe they did carry it around for a while. <laughs> they, they carried around all these things. And, and everything was very tight. Gundan Monastery was built according to spec. Mm -hmm. the, so, you know, specification like in the Vinaya, like how big the monk's room can be. And they measured it all very carefully. And, and then I think it got sloppy again. <laughs> now it's very lax as far as, you know, not owning a house or... Ownership is very lax at the monastery. There's a lot of, most things are privately owned and very tightly owned. And this is my house, this is my teacher's house, you know. And I, I would like to see it go back yeah. to being, uh, the Tantra College is, is uh, monastic. Uh, you can't own a room at the Tantra College and you have to move every three months. Uh, yeah. And I like it. That's the way it was supposed to be. But at Sarah, just because they were refugees and pieces of land were dealt, and it got sloppy. And there's a, Rinpoche tried to break it, and he, he broke it with the food. He, he put everybody's food together. Uh, and there was a, it was a huge battle yeah. for years. And then finally it was equal. Everybody got equal food. Uh, and he just... He, there came a very tense moment when he said, I want a unanimous vote now, or I, m I walk out. And there's 1,500 monks, you know, one monk's like, everybody's watching this one monk who was threatening to raise his hand, and we're all like, <laughs> 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 and he did not. And then I remember saying, okay, so I'll stay. <laughs> so he, he wanted everybody to have equal right to food, and, but he couldn't do it with the housing. He, tr he started, and he, he couldn't <laughs> do it. It was too much. People have their own private house. They're getting fancy. Yeah. If they try to build a bigger one than the other guy, and it's very non-monastic. So anyway, uh, Kembush, <coughs> uh, yeah, okay. Kyabse uh, Dorang Before, before the ceremony, the candidate should take refuge. Okay, Kyabse means going for refuge. Before, uh, it it should come before Doa to go means to come. Okay, uh, a, a refuge going should come before, uh, and then you should rabchu uh, gitsutum nipa. Then you can grant the person. They can take. They can take on the morality of a or, of a ordained person. So now we're talking about leaving the family life. We're not talking about the other vows yet. Okay. Nyamba number sum pongwa kilamba. Then they should uh, agree to give up the uh, three failings. Do you remember what they were? Fail to do this, fail to do this, fail to do that. Do you remember that it's the deterioration? Teachers and First, not failing to deteriorate away from listening to the teacher. Those three? Uh, yeah, well, failing to address the Vow giver is the technical name of the vow. Okay. Failing, failing to address the vow giver. Yeah, I'll call them the three failures rather than the three degenerations. Okay, I think it's three failures. You failed to, you failed to uh, address the vow giver, which means you you failed to request uh, the vows to leave the home life. And then you failed to take on the appearance of a monk, and you failed to give up the appearance of a lay person. Okay. Which I'm technically failing right now. Sambadantaktam 
I mean, this is misspelled. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. And there's a mistake down here somewhere. Here it is. Uh, okay. Uh, then uh, da lekpa trupa. Say da. Say da trupa. Da trupa. Da trupa. Da trupa means one zimba. Meaning? To uh, appear directly or to identify. But this da trupa means acquaint them with or introduce them to. Okay. Acquaint them with da tripa. Literally, it means give them the word, right? And you have to do it lekpa. Well. So acquaint acquaint them carefully with the meaning of the three exchanges. Okay, jewa. Dakshin dakshin yamji. Right. Dakshin yamji. Exchanging stuff and equalizing yam. And so really, that's two things. Dakshin yamji is two things. Two different things. Equal rights, and then empathy. Okay, Dakshin Jewa. Uh, but this is called the three, the three changes. Okay, Jewa Sum, the three changes. The left part is not modifying, like that. It's not saying give them the good word. Hmm. Uh, it would be Lekpe Da Trupa. Da Trupa, or Da Lekpa Trupa. But this is Da Lekpa. This is an adverb because it has an R. Mm. Okay, uh, that's a good question. Uh, so they're going to change their sampa, they're going to change their talk, and they're going to change their ming. Okay, a sampa means they're going to change, the, they have to change the way they think about themselves. You know, you're not a normal person anymore. Mainly, you have to keep morality, tight, morality tighter than other people. Yeah. That's the main sampa change, the main change in how you think is, okay, from now on, you've got to be more careful with your morality. It's not, uh, now I'm a person with a red robe. <laughs> okay? But I'm afraid it has become that. You know, uh, the, the change in, in how you think of yourself is supposed to be, well, now I have to keep my morality tighter. You know? mm. Dark means sign, but here it means your, your appearance. Right, how you look to people. Okay, you're gonna take on a change of appearance. In China, they used to burn the street. They still do, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's partly so you can't hide what you are anymore. But, you know, you can't. You know, a Tibetan monk can grow their hair, or a Tibetan monk can pretend they're just a guy with a short haircut, and wear lay clothes and go mess around. You know. So I think they started to burn it on you. Uh, which is a good idea. Uh, <laughs> and Ming, uh, you, you get a new name. You change your name. You get an ordination name. Okay? So you must acquaint the candidate very well with the point, dun, with the point of these three changes in their life. Okay? Talk to them about how they're changing in three ways now. Uh, Etc. So all through here, all this stuff here, he has listed the parts of the ceremony for leaving the home life. He didn't get to the vows of the novice monk yet. Uh, he's just talking about th the ceremony, which is the meaning of address the vow giver, which he said the meaning was, listen to what your lama says. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but now he's, he's correcting it, or he's saying, you know what, actually it's take the vows properly. Take your leaving the family life vows properly before you take any monastic vows. Okay. Uh, this is more of a commitment than a vow. It's not one of the eight sets of vows, right? There's no separate set of vows called leaving the home life. This, so this is more of a commitment that you make before you take vows. Okay. Rab Chungi Choga Rap Chungi Choga, do the ordination ceremony, okay? 
by the way, you never use choke unless it's part of a two-syllable word. You see, you say jung choke, but you don't say rabjungi choke. Never. Uh, so it had to be choga, and the person mistyped it. Okay, rabjungi choga, the ceremony for taking the commitment to lead the home life. Uh, you should do it manor war. R, R on top of an adjective always means adverbial. It changes unmistaken to, yeah, unmistakingly. Do it with no boo-boos. No boo-boos. Manor war. What? Uh, you know, you must conduct this ceremony with no boo-boos. Everything has to be correct. Okay? Uh, and it should be done in accordance with dar, or according to dar, what is stated as the correct ceremony, where? In the Vinaya Sutra, which is not a sutra, sutra okay, it's in the tenure. Uh, so you, you know, and in Gong Dao Chen Den. Chen Den means authoritative. It means pramanical. <laughs> okay. Which are, here it means authoritative. Uh, Gong Dao means uh, commentaries on its intent. Commentaries on the intent of the. Of the yeah. So check the Vinaya Sutra. Check real good commentaries on what it means, Gong Dao. And then follow that with no boo-boos. Okay, and that's and that's the ceremony uh, for taking the commitment to lead the family life, which has the components that I just mentioned. All those components that I just mentioned. Okay, they have to give up the three failings. They have to make the three changes. They have to have done and taking refuge before. They have to have committed to the morality of a of a person who leaves, leaves the family life, they must have cut the little tuft of hair on their head, they must have wet it afterwards or during, they must have touched the abbot's feet, there must have been some asking them to do their prostrations, and they must have been bestowed their upper robe, lower robe, seat, uh, sages pole, and their <laughs> strainer, all the necessary uh, accoutrement. <coughs> Okay, and you must have asked them to have thought about renunciation. They must have made a formal request for the vows to the vow giver, and you must have given them a lecture about the problems of samsara and the benefits of freedom, and you must have checked to see if they have any of the classic obstacles. Whew. Okay, that's uh, all. Those are parts of this ceremony. I think so. That's up to the translator. <laughs> to about the ceremony of the yeah, you could call it ceremony for leaving the home life, yeah. Uh, or something like that. That's a good place for a header, yeah. Uh, now, here's an answer to a question I think all of us were having in our mind a little bit. Uh, uh, as far as a good soul ma, yeah, a novice nun. Don't believe it. So how they take their vow. But now he's talking about the novice vows. Mm -hmm. So that kind of implies that the novice vows were taken during the rupturing vows. Mm -hmm. Okay, so during the vows to leave the home life. Apparently, you took the. He already. He's assuming you took your novice monk's vows at the same time. Now he says you may wonder about how you take the vows for a novice, female, monk, uh, nun, a nun. Gyur tembu re matok, aside from a few minor adjustments, okay, gyur means just adjustments, tembu means nothing big, a re means a couple, a some, some, some minor adjustments, matok means except for, Except for a few minor adjustments, uh, this should be choga. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or they, yeah. Choga dan kunchu gecho chitawa shindijao. The ceremony and how they are to comport themselves, how they are to behave, uh, is the same as with a male. A male novice. Okay. How they are to take the ceremony and what they're, how they're supposed to a behave, kunchu, normal behavior. Everyday behavior is the same as with a normal, with a normal, with a male monk. Okay, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Do a long lay. Uh, in the Dulwa Lung, so uh, in the scriptures on Vinaya, meaning in the Kangir, okay, the ones from the Kangir. So those are huge things, they're like a thousand pages long, Vinaya Vastu. They're the first thing in the Kangir, and they are long, and they're very complex, you know. Uh, so they were simplified in the Vinaya Sutra, and uh, most people don't look much at the Vinaya Vastu, unless you're trying to prove something. Uh, so Dua Lungle, in the scriptures on the Vinaya, Geitsu ki dombe mi tong jok chu sumba, there are statements, or there are described, uh, ten different mi tunchoks. Mi tunchok means uh, not harmony side as Rinpoche would say. <laughs> uh, but what it means is, I like to translate it as, things that would work against you. Oh, that's right. Things that would work against you. <laughs> okay? uh, it means unharmony side. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the study of meditation, for example, there's a list of mitun jokes for the place of meditation. Right. You know, things that would work against you. Okay. Yeah. So things that would uh, work against a novice monk's vows, a novice monk or nun's vows. Shaoping, where it says Gezo now, from here on, I would say novice monk or nun. You see, I would supply, in modern English composition, it's considered mm -hmm. bad form to only talk about the male. Okay, so it doesn't say male or female here. And they're talking about the male, but I think since your readers are modern, you know, English speakers, it would be considered bad, bad English to not say he or she. Uh, yeah. At the same book, why would you say that novice would be included? You can say that. Just yeah. Novice. yeah, you could say novice. Yeah, find a way to include both men and women. Okay. Choose Sumbatar. So there are ten things that would work against your vows. Okay. So during the ceremony, cup means kapsu means during, during the occasion of the ceremony. Juktu uh, means after. Okay, following. Njuktu. So with a apostrophe it means to enter. With an M, it means to leave. <laughs> and they're both prenasal. So be careful. Okay? Mjuktu means after. Okay? After they have got their ordained person's vow, okay? after that, then you're supposed to. Uh, jukpa here again in Vinaya ceremonies means get them to do. Okay? Induce them to do. Okay, get them to do something. What? Get them to kalen, accept. Get them to accept pangja chu, the ten things you should stop doing. Ten things you should stop doing. The ten, chupo. Chupa means what? Ten. Ten Chu means ten. Chupo means the ten, the group of ten. Okay, get them to, you know, after the ceremony is finished, they already took their vows. Now you, the, the ten things that are not conducive to vows, get them to commit to give those up also. Okay? 
Okay? Okay. Pangja Chupo Deda Langde So Dukta Gurtsoni. Now, nowadays, when you talk about novice monk and nun, you say the 36 long days, okay? The 36 commitments, okay? It's 36 commitments. Yeah, and they're called long day. Uh, I don't know why they're called long day. Uh, I just think of long day as novice vows, but there's probably a meaning there. Long is past tense of took. So that part's clear. <laughs> day means gone, by, past, tense, long day. Uh, I suspect it means take them and don't break them. Because <laughs> day can mean to go beyond the, the word of a, the letter of a vowel. Okay. Now, suppose you wanted to come up with an English word for long day. Because I, I have never... I don't, I mean, I looked it up for Chuki, I don't remember. Okay, so let's go look up long day. Okay, and uh, let's see if anyone explained why does it call long and day. Okay, so we'll fill it in here, okay? And then what do we do? Someone tell me. Add after long day. I'm going to kiss you, but you're so far away. Add, a, add what? Uh, We're looking for... We're looking for a tzikshe. What's a tzikshe? Oh, word explanation. A literal explanation. Right. You know, like why is nirvana called blowing out? What are you blowing? What are you blowing out? This is, why are the heaps called heaps? Because they include piles of things. Okay? <laughs> so why is it called langde? So we say share, she. Sorry, I believe it has to be she after uh, an S, okay? Uh, or long day, ser. But maybe somebody made a mistake and said she, okay? Or uh, maybe, <laughs> although this is not very likely, they said long day, okay? okay. Uh, now, we could just go to the Vinaya, but maybe there's a book outside the Vinaya where they say what it is. So let's not restrict ourselves to the Vinaya. Mm. And normally, when you frame a search like this, you don't get more than one or two hits. It's not like millions of people are explaining why it's called Long Day. Yeah. You'll be lucky to hit one. So go for the whole thing. Go for the whole database. If you fail in Sumbum, go to Tengir. If you fail in Tengir, go to Kangir. It's not going to be there. <laughs> and then you desperately pushed into the uncatalogued data, verboten zone, the forbidden zone. Is it? Uh, it's a. It's a. It's a, it's a stretch of beach on the uh, southwestern part of Africa where you can walk down the beach and pick up oh diamonds. Nice. Oh, wow. And the Germans blocked it off and called yeah. it fair buttons. Anyway, there's probably lots of fair buttons on. Okay. Namibia. Wow. Hmm. Nobody bothered? Oh. No. no. By the way, that's wrong. I don't know. W somebody should tell. It's kind of a little bit irritating. Oh yeah. That's that? I'm displaying oh. one out of zero matches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I always wonder. If I was missing so something. Sort of true. <laughs> <laughs> I I knew you were gonna debate me on that. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go see if ta anybody in the thing you did it. Oh. No, there's no corresponding thing. Uh, okay, so let's let's just let's try Tengir. I don't think it's going to be there. Uh, and, but it's interesting. No one has explained it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, It's not going to be in the con year. Okay, let's start an uncatalogued data and keep going. Okay, because it'll take a long time. Okay, here we go. Uh, now, 
how do you get those 10 things that you're supposed to agree not to do? How does that, how do you get 36 out of 10? That's what he's saying. Gyurtsu means how do you get, how do you get 36 long days out of uh, 10 things that the Vinaya, ancient Vinaya scriptures had as 10? How did, this, how did 36 derive from 10? Okay. Uh, So now uh, we're going to split killing into four, taking life into four. Okay. Uh, so, Damnaki Kapsa Sokchu Ponga Kelangba, Deni Gelong La Sokchu Ki Pamba Don, Dundo Dep Chu Jep Chu Chu Sunki Tung Che Sum De Tunga Shu Zepa Dang Tumba Dir Sokchu Shi. Uh, here we have four kinds of taking life, four variations on taking life. So taking life must be one of the ten, and it becomes four. Uh, if, if during the, the period of advices, that in Vinaya, that refers to the period after taking the vow, when the Lama gives you additional advices. Mm -hmm. It's called the advice period. <laughs> so you already took your vows, you're already a Gatesal, mm -hmm. but the Lama will wrap up the ceremony and, you know, say, between you and me, in English we say, between you and me, you know, let's talk personal. Don't do this, don't do this. You know, you took these other vows, but don't do this either, don't do this either, don't do this either. I'm, a, I'm just giving you some advice. It used to be that. Now it's part of the ceremony. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. It was supposed to be heart-to-heart -heart talk, mm. you went to the Lama's room and they said, okay, now, I remember Rinpoche when he took me in his room, he said, now you got a chance for, to become a Buddha, you know, wow. now you got a chance, you know, like, you know? <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's real dumb, uh, in the period of giving the advice, uh, It's similar, okay, it's similar to how, uh, okay, Tumba. It's similar to how in the, in the monk's, full monk's vow, okay, it's similar to how in the full monk's vow, uh, we break it into four parts, four downfalls, Tumba, what we call them downfall. It's a category of full monk's vows. So the, the full monk's vows, 253 vows, are broken into categories. Mm -hmm. And one of them is called Dunga, uh, downfalls. Mm -hmm. You fell down. Yes, yeah. So here, we, do we, it's a measure about four monks. Do we also need to talk about four nuns? Or no? uh, yeah, but he didn't. He just said but, monks. But do we need to? No. Uh, he's just comparing it to the male full ordained vows. Probably because his audience is males. Uh, so in the in the full ordained monks' vows, we talk about we split something into four. We we split we split taking life into four downfalls. What are they? Deni gelong la sukchiki pamba. So the general vow for a full monk, which is called a pamba. Pamba means a defeat, yeah. a defeat, meaning uh, you lose your vows. There are four in four monks' vows, okay? Pamba means big, big mistake, major mistake, okay? <coughs> First one is having sex, okay? Pamba, killing, lying about your spiritual things, things like that. Pamba means the downfall, okay? It, it, you were defeated. So if you're talking about a soccer game or something, you say pam chum. They lost the game. Mm -hmm. They lost the game. Pum. Okay. Me pum. Undefeatable. Yeah. Ma Maitreya. yeah, Maitreya's nickname is called un unbeatable. Uh, me pum. And it's a common name in other traditions. Uh, mm -hmm. mm. Ajit, I think. Ajit. 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 I, I think it's oh, Ajit. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, so uh, in in the full monks' vows, the the def the defeat for killing uh, is to is kind of split into three uh, uh, downfalls. So there's the main killing, and then there's three downfalls. Main killing a human or a human fetus is a defeat, mm -hmm. but there's three downfalls that can be der derived from that. Mm -hmm. They are what? Uh, animals, dundro, mm -hmm. either you... Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, I'll have to go look these up, but I'm guessing that means to strike them. Uh, that means, I, I'm guessing, I need to look it up. That means to strike them. Chu means to use them. And then Chu means to cut, probably means to kill them. Okay, so either it, it means to abuse an animal or to kill an animal. It's not a pamba. It's not a first degree vow, but it's like a second degree vow. You know, you can't hurt animals. Yeah. The using of animals? Well, it seems to say that, now we should go look it up. And this is the kind of thing I looked up for five years and now I'm going to have to do it again. It's really irritating. But uh, I, don't, I don't have it in the top of my mind. So let's go look up Debche. Debche. Okay, it's probably. Uh, okay, probably it's, it's there. By the way, our other search is still going. <laughs> you know, and you can have multiple searches up at the same time. I like to spread them out on my window so I don't forget I have another one going. Okay. Uh, and let's see if anybody bothered to split this up into three. And it, it's kind of, it's not always very common that they do, you know, uh, list them for you beyond those three words. Okay, but I hope somebody did. Here we go. What, what? <coughs> uh, not in the... I would try to take two of them that I know are, are pretty good. I'll take off the suffix letter. Okay, I'll look for them in the same line. Okay, how about the same two lines? Okay. Now we're going to get more hits than what we wanted. Mm -hmm. There's going to be non-Vinaya hits, mm -hmm. but maybe we'll also hit a Vinaya thing. If there's more than 100, I won't bother. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So here we go. Mm, that's not it. Although it is in Vinaya. Mm -hmm. uh, 305. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Uh, But I am in Vinaya, so it's kind of hopeful. Well, here's one. Uh, we got the Deba here. Mm -hmm. Deb means to Tsun Deb. Tsun Deb Korlo. Hey, strike for the weapon. Strike them with a weapon. Strike them with a blade. Okay. Yeah. That's sin dip. Like so the one I said beat them. Here he said strike them with a with a weapon. Okay. Mm. And here this guy is uh, saying, Well what if you're gonna do bloodletting? Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's an old medical treatment where they cut you to open out your blood and they take out the bad blood. Uh, it's an old. Uh, like right. in, in Europe, it was uh, like, I don't know how many, a couple hundred years ago. They would. Yeah, sometimes they even use that animal who, who suck your blood. Yeah. That's how your cat died? Leech or chupacabra. Right. It's too many, okay? It's 300. Uh, I would probably do it on my own, okay? Uh, I might look up Deb near Sum and lower it to 1. This is more desperate, and I'm going to change it to Vinaya, okay? So uh, 
So, you know, I'm sorry, I've done all this before, but I guess I'm supposed to learn it again. <laughs> uh, this is not it. This is not it. Two. This is not it. 200? I'm down to 200. Mm -hmm. How about Sokchak Dep? Animal. Mm -hmm. Near near three or to strike? Okay? Oh. Let's try that. Let's increase it to three. Okay? This is the kind of thing I, I enjoy doing. Uh, that's not it. Uh, This is not gonna work. <laughs> How many I got down? Eleven. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it called? Soak. Uh, Dep ch. How about ch ch s p y o d c o d? How about that? <coughs> No. no. How about Tengir and Kangir? <coughs> and, and then I'm going to stop. I mean, I'll, I'll go do it on my own and not waste your time. Okay. Uh, which I don't mind to do. I'll learn something. Uh, Kangir. Let's try Kangir and Tengir. <laughs> That's not it. That's Tantra. Okay. Uh, let's. Well, that's complicated. Yeah, it doesn't exist in the Kangyur Tengyur. <laughs> hey, we hit one over here. <laughs> hey, it's here. this is it. Can't uh, <laughs> remember what that was anymore. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is the literal This is the literal explanation of Wow. Uh, that was a... That was a long shot. Files. Yeah, out of 30,000 files, there's only one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did. It's actually a socket text, I think. Uh, That's okay. Yeah, so we got to go back to long day. <laughs> yeah, and actually, we'd have to go identify the book, and I'm not going to do it today because it would take all your time. But we can do it later, okay. But uh, so the the goal with Vinaya is is a lot of Vinaya is made up of kind of clunky compound words that you don't clunky means not very elegant, not very smooth. Compound means many different words put together. So I don't want, I don't think you want to call it, <coughs> here's what he said, uh, either before your vow master or before your own teacher, in Chungdu means at the feet of either one, uh, you have uh, d directly agreed to do something, lang, past tense, agreed, ke lang, okay, and uh, you cannot Transgress that. Transgress means to go beyond a vow, to break a vow. It's an English word for going beyond. So this is the morality talk in English. Transgress a law or transgress a, ver uh, a rule. S but it's a perfect for ndepa. Okay. So to transgress what you have accepted is langde. So if you're not in the mixed nut school of translation, you will call it an acceptance transgression. <laughs> acceptance transgression, long day. Uh, but we're not going to do that, <laughs> OK? So we might call it a transgression or something. Uh, it means a breaking of the vow. And there are 36. So it's interesting that the 36 vows 
for a novice are called transgressions instead of vows. That's kind of assuming they're going to break them. It's 36 beyond the four. Beyond what you accepted. Beyond what you agreed to. Oh, no, I mean, so. Well, you really did agree to them. It's just to yeah, them down. commitment would be okay. You yeah. see, they're not transgressions yet. <laughs> but the word for commitment is transgression. By the way, you might want to call it commitment. And then you have a footnote that says that the, the literal word is to transgress what you agreed to. But you could just call them the 36 commitments. You know, commitment in English means what you agreed to. And in, in ethical things, it implies you agreed not to break something. So, I don't know, I might be more comfortable with 36 commitments, but then I would have a footnote that says, this is long day. If you want to look super smart, <laughs> which of course we do, uh, I don't know how much of this stuff is in Sanskrit. Uh, Vinaya is pretty, I, I believe there's a lot of Vinaya Sanskrit texts around. They don't have it in, in, in Das, in uh, Lokesh Chandra. Yeah, he, he, he didn't, he doesn't have a, we could, we could do this when you're desperate. Mm. Mm. Proximity search. Yeah, no, he doesn't have it. Okay. Okay. Mm. <coughs> so when you take your full monk's vows, uh, you agree not to kill a human or a fetus, and that agreement, that category of vows is called a defeat, if you break it. But from the defeat have been derived three lesser vows not to abuse animals, not to hurt, not to, I, I take it to be, uh, I still take it to be beat, use, or, uh, beat, abuse, or kill. Uh, and we could look up the monk's vow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just the, the secondary monk's vows. Yeah. You want to do text. that? It's probably in the same text, right? Uh, I actually have them separately because I do my book from them. Yeah. Uh, vows. Here's the monk vows, okay? I actually have a separate document of them that I keep. So those are the monk's mouths. Here's the four. Okay. Expulsory offenses. <laughs> oh. oh, don't say that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Joking. I'm doing it. Uh, I'm making fun. Uh, making fun. So this is the best summary I know. The best short summary. It's only 34 pages of the monk's mouth. 253 mouths. Okay. So we'll look for animal. Okay. Uh, so he used dindro. Seja de la mi yimba mir chapashi good day. If you're going to break one of the big four, you have to kill a human or a fetus. Here's the word for fetus, mir chapa. Uh, yeah, an unborn human. It means, uh, chapa here means formed. It doesn't mean desire, okay? Formed as a human. It means a fetus. If you kill a mi mayimba, meaning a spirit being, <laughs> oh. uh, that's a bombo. That's a second category serious. And if you kill an animal, that's a downfall. Uh -huh. So we know one of them is to kill an animal. Okay? So the ch, the cut, must be animal. The, the cut in our list of three must be set, must be to kill an animal. Here it's stated. Killing an animal is one of the tungches, downfalls. Now let's see if he's got it further on. See, this is in the middle of a discussion of pambas, of uh, the top four. Okay. There's a document called Vinaya Vows 2012 with notes that looks like it's from you, and it's taking uh, OCIP stuff with English. I wouldn't mind to have a copy of that if you want to send it to me. It's probably for that lecture I gave yeah. The, yeah. during the famous. Uh, Send yeah, send oh, it to me. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> here, uh, here he re repeats. Uh, he he repeats the same thing. Uh, 
Oh, here he's talking about uh, what happens if you lie to an animal. <laughs> Don't worry, Gracie, you're going to get a, a bone tonight. <laughs> I, I'm not going right. there. Yeah. <laughs> right, the value is complete when the animal goes. <laughs> I did it. I broke the value. Exactly. Here's a list of the downfalls. These are the. Okay, this is the this is the downfalls. Okay, uh. and number one oh eight, the hundred and eighth monk vow out of two hundred fifty three is uh, the downfall of killing an animal. And this is an interesting definition if you're interested. Shengi shorla mayimba. Shorla means uh, by the way of doing something else. You mm. see, so. You weren't mowing a lawn and you killed some animals. Oh, right. not by that. Yeah, right. so it has to be focused at the animal. Uh, it means not in the act of driving a car. See, you didn't get in a car to kill animals. You got in a car to get the rim rod. Uh, on the way, you might kill some bugs, okay? So that's not a tumche. Uh, it's bad. You still make bad karma, but it's not, uh, it doesn't hurt your monk's spouse. Okay, S if you drive a car and you hit some bugs, okay, mm -hmm. it's still a bad karma, but it's not breaking up this vow, yeah. not yeah. this vow. Shengi shorla mayimbar sam shindu means knowingly, purposely, not by accident, yeah. with mm -hmm. pre-intent. Uh, mm -hmm. Dundo su kill an animal, or here's a vegetarian, su de chupa get somebody else to kill an animal. Yeah. Okay, su de chupa. Sena, you break your vow. Mm -hmm. So that could be used as a justification for vegetarianism, you know, for monks and nuns. Okay, uh, let's just see if there's any other. Can you get a copy of this document? Yeah, and to be frank, I don't see. Oh, here it is. Uh, no. Yeah, he doesn't discuss any other ones. There's only one in the nuns' vows, too. Yeah. It's one of the. So. Is there an English version like this? No? Can we have this version? Yeah. Uh, let me send it to you right now. Uh, I'm going to send it to Utpala, right? Send it to me too. Monks, vows. It's just the Geshe Sewang Sandu. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tutor to the tenth Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote a great book on all the vows, uh, which I put it back together. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, vows. Yeah. We should get going. Okay. There you go. Should I have this? Huh? Should I have this? I'll put it up. Uh, we can put it in your Dropbox. Anyway, it's still not clear what the other two are. But I bet somebody discusses it, and we can go look for it, okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can keep looking. Yeah. Yeah, that normally means to start, uh, which makes me think ch means long to, to to make use of. But it can also mean new balang ch, the western continent is where they use cattle. You see, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They employ cattle, uh, so I, I'm thinking uh, <laughs> it, it, it <laughs> they get paid just less than you do. Thank
So don't forget that was a discussion of how the ten advices to not do something become the 36 gui guidelines for novice monks and nuns. <coughs>